Heartbeats and Blood Flows, experiment number 37. I almost never saw this occur, but the simulation was running in the background, and when I looked at it, it was very different from where I had last seen it. It takes many cycles to form. This is the heart getting formed, these regions of red. The frames per second is only 35. I'm running with only one core to let the screen capture have some CPU cycles. I see some blood veins starting to form, these red and blue. Each particle is slightly different. The two red particles, there's two different types. This one can see itself, denoted by the triangle. This one can't see itself. This is a flesh-colored particle that is seen and is seen and can be seen by all particles. But for the most part, this blue and this red are exactly the same. Okay, so here we get some blood veins really forming and empty vessels in between. There's no little droplets in a lot of these vessels. The droplets I refer to are these little singular particles of red. And these single particles of red belong to this group here. The blue and this red, these two, are symmetrical in their behavior, so they are these two particles. So here we can see a heart getting formed. And what will happen is these veins will start to fill. Stop the, start the simulation, rewind to this, and uh, you'll see compared to the end that here there's no blood veins really that are filled very much, but at the end most of these veins will be filled with blood. So what happens is these hearts will pump out little particles of blood into these empty spaces and that will push on the other particles and they will subsequently keep pushing their neighbors and eventually we will have all the veins filled with blood. Each particle obeys a simple formula that decides the particle's direction. The direction is based on the particle's radius of its own perception, the number of neighboring particles within that radius, and if there are more neighbors on the right or the left. If there are more on the left, it tends to steer left. If more on the right, it tends to steer right. And the magnitude of that steering is based on the total number of particles in its radius. Now the hearts are really forming and you're starting to get many more blood droplets filling in the veins, but there's still some empty spaces here, 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 up in here. These bigger amoebas will start to merge. Running about 6,000 particles on a 150 by 150 world, I think, or maybe it's 140 by 120. Looking at these things really makes you think about the creation of our universe and how simple rules like electric charge and gravity can lead to complicated behavior. These life forms all want to seek the steady state with no movement, but their particle formula counteracts no movement when they're close together. If the particles aren't close together, then they stop doing anything interesting, kind of like a dying, expanding universe. A lot of existential questions that arise as you think about these systems. Are these things conscious? What is consciousness? How do you prove anyone or anything is conscious? Am I dreaming? I predict consciousness will be one of the last remaining questions after we've discovered all the other secrets of our universe. We have problems understanding our universe in part because we can't observe all of its history and features in future. So here I added this slider bar to look at the past history and it adds a little fade to the simulation. It blends the previous, say, 10 frames with the rest of the animation so you can see where the particles have been. It's kind of like observing an electron cloud. An electron cloud. Uh, you see the probability of where things are. You don't necessarily see their position and speed at the same time. It takes a while to see things progress. It took years to understand the motion of the stars and the galaxies. There might be other forces in play that we can't observe because of the sheer scale of time. In these simulations, the same limitation of frames is at work. 
Also, the t sizes are immense in the universe. In these particle simulations, I can only simulate small worlds, but what happens if I could run a huge 2 megapixel by 2 megapixel world in which these life forms could have space to evolve without hitting each other? It really makes you think about our own huge universe and the time scale in which we exist. Scientists say it took 4 million years for humans to evolve. How much time is that for this particle simulator that runs at 35 frames per second? And if I jumpstart the simulation at 4 million years by just loading it, would the digital inhabitants think that it took themselves 4 million years to evolve? Now the blood particles are really filling in all the channels. And you can see, if you watch, Sometimes this heart will emit a particle into a blank space, like right here. Let's keep watching this. Or right here. Oop, I think I saw some. Yep, there was one right there. Rewind it if you didn't see it. Here's a blank space ready to get filled by this heart. Let's see if it happens. Once I had a flaw in the program, but when I ran it, it grew a really neat life form that I haven't been, been able to recreate. But it made me think, are there some quote unquote flaws in our own universe that we're attempting to figure out? Could the digital inhabitants of this world figure out that I had a flaw in the program? Is dark matter a flaw in our own universe? And is it really a flaw if that's how it works? Is Pioneer's unexpected change in velocity a flaw? Is the ability to not move faster than the speed of light a flaw? Maybe our universe's code can't handle big numbers or large movements in both space and time at the same time. Can we even begin to really figure out how it works? I keep referring to these experiments as biodigital, but I think they more closely mimic atoms than biology. Atoms have a valence shell with electrons that attract other particles and a radius of these shells that affect what they interact with. I might add some valence shells to the simulator to see if I can add atoms that interact realistically, like two hydrogen atoms combining with oxygen to make water. Some of these particles of flesh get surrounded by blood and kind of encapsulated. It's like the blood's carrying off a bacteria or something from the system. And other ones get really excitable, like right here. If you rewind that, or right here, you see the little individual blood droplets push around the flesh a whole lot, and then they just go back to chilling out on their little blood vessels. I don't know what makes them do that. I'll turn the fade back down and we'll see where they are instantaneously. YouTube has a problem showing these simulations with a lot of dynamic movement on little particles. They tend to want to compress the stream. So I think the fade kind of gets around that. It's a trade-off, I guess. So let's see what it looks like with more fade on YouTube. See here, this particle is really disrupting the flesh. Here, here, well I don't want to take up too much space on YouTube's hard drive so I guess I'll end this in a little while. I'll let it go on for a little longer. I think we've achieved our goal. Looks like we're getting a left and a right ventricle here. Maybe these two will attempt to merge if this blood vein doesn't stand in the way. There's 
There's a nice cavity forming. It's kind of unusual for this late in the simulation. Originally I had this running on a bigger world, but like I said, I just couldn't upload it to YouTube and have YouTube play it back in the same fidelity. So I had to make the particles bigger and scale down the world size. Ooh, did you see that? A lot of particles were emitted right here. A lot of blood particles here. They are getting pushed now on over into this area. Looks like he developed a little not not module or something. Well, I think we've achieved our goal. I'll now cause a massive coronary heart attack and say goodbye.